A few weeks ago, I did a video on high insulin foods to avoid if you are insulin resistant. And today we are going to be talking about low insulin foods that can actually help you to reverse insulin resistance. Now, I get really frustrated when I read some of the mainstream articles on this subject. There seems to be no logic or consistency in some of the recommendations. Take this article from Medical News Today, for example. It says the Diabetes Council recommends eating the following foods to keep insulin and blood sugar levels low. And they go on to list foods including bananas, honey, and slow cooked oatmeal. All three of these foods raise blood sugar and insulin significantly. One ripe banana has the equivalent of five teaspoons of sugar. And while a banana might be a suitable option in certain situations, such as before a hard workout, for someone who is insulin resistant, bananas will only further contribute to the problem. In today's video, I'm going to give you an extensive list of low insulin foods that are suitable for someone with insulin resistance and that can help you to reverse it. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe and make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Now, whenever I make a video on insulin and insulin resistance, I like to give a quick overview because understanding insulin resistance really helps to understand how to reverse it. But if you have watched my other videos and already understand insulin resistance, you can skip ahead by using the timestamps or chapters as YouTube calls them on the progress bar down below. Either way, stick around until the end of the video because I'm going to be giving you a bonus tip that is super easy to implement and can drastically help with insulin resistance. Insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a state where the cells in our body are no longer responding to insulin correctly. This happens when insulin levels in the body are high for extended periods of time. One of insulin's main roles in the body is to regulate blood sugar. Usually when we eat, blood sugar rises, and as a result, the pancreas releases insulin. The insulin then ushers the excess sugar out of the blood and into our cells. Now, when you become insulin resistant, your cells stop accepting the blood sugar. This leads to your insulin levels remaining high and eventually your blood sugar remaining high as well, which is when you will develop type 2 diabetes. But if you catch insulin resistance early enough, you can stop it before it gets to that point. Some signs of insulin resistance include difficulty losing weight, skin tags on places such as your neck and armpits, and excess abdominal fat. You can check out my video on 9 symptoms of insulin resistance if you want to know more. But one important thing to note is that insulin resistance can manifest years before there is a change in your fasting blood sugar. For this reason, it often goes undiagnosed because healthcare practitioners rarely check insulin levels. So because insulin resistance is caused by high insulin levels, also known as hyperinsulinemia, the key to reversing it is keeping insulin low. When you keep insulin low, your cells become more sensitive to insulin again. And this leads us into the topic of today's video, the best low insulin foods to reverse insulin resistance. Low insulin foods. Now, before we get into it, I just wanna make one final quick note about the insulin index. The insulin index is similar to the glycemic index, but instead of measuring the blood sugar response to foods, it measures the insulin response instead. In most cases, the glycemic index and the insulin index response match up. Foods that spike blood sugar also spike insulin considerably. And this makes sense. Insulin is responsible for regulating blood sugar levels. So when blood sugar goes up, insulin goes up too. But what we need to remember for the purposes of today's video is that the insulin index tests foods in isolation, which is rarely how we eat them. And combining or eating foods in a different order can drastically change the insulin response. For example, when we eat carb and protein rich foods together, the insulin response is much higher than eating one or the other on its own. 
And the other thing that we need to take into consideration is that the insulin index was formed on the basis of a high carb diet. The insulin response to different foods can be vastly different for someone who eats a low carb diet. Take beef for example. When consumed in the context of a high carb diet, the insulin response is moderate. But in the context of a low carb diet, the response is very low. Dr. Ben Bickman, who is probably the number one researcher when it comes to insulin resistance, has done several videos on this topic, and I will link to a few in the description box down below. In someone eating a standard American diet, which is of course carb heavy, there is a, a massive increase in insulin, where insulin goes up several times um, over baseline. Even over when eating, they were eating a pure carbohydrate source. The adding protein to that then sends it up even further. So it is amplifying the inherent insulinogenic capacity of the carbohydrate. In contrast, in the instance of a low-carb fed individual, because we need to have the, uh, the liver making glucose via gluconeogenesis, we can't afford to have insulin spiking so high because that would absolutely clamp down on gluconeogenesis. And thus, as the evidence suggests in humans, we in fact don't see that expected rise that we do see in insulin with the carb-fed individual. We see no such effect in the low-carb-fed person to the point that there is in fact no response. It, it ends up being fairly neutral with regards to the endocrine response, which a lot of people don't appreciate. We look at the textbook version saying these amino acids are insulinogenic, and yet that's in this overwhelmingly common situation of a carbohydrate-fed state, and that didn't consider the low-carb-fed state. But the point is, as we go through this list, this is something to keep in consideration. And now with that out of the way, let's get into the best low insulin foods you can eat for insulin resistance. We're going to start off today talking about foods that are high in fat, as fat has next to no insulin response. Foods such as butter, ghee, olive oil, coconut oil, tallow, lard, sour cream, and heavy cream all have next to no insulin response. Fatty fruits such as avocados and olives also have a very minimal response. Eggs are one of my favorite insulin friendly foods and one of my favorite foods in general in fact. The yolks are a great source of not only healthy fats but also fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, selenium, biotin, and a whole lot more. So they really are a win-win. Low insulin response high nutritional value, they are super versatile, and they are delicious. But here is what is interesting about eggs. If you eat the yolks alone or the whole egg, the insulin response is low. But if you eat the whites on their own, it can potentially be almost twice as high. Of course, as we discussed before, this is highly dependent on what your diet looks like otherwise. If you are eating a high carb diet, then yes, this applies. If you were eating a low carb diet, then no, probably not. But I mean, there is really no reason to eat the whites on their own anyways. If you do, you are missing out on the most nutritious part of the egg. Cheeses such as cheddar, blue cheese, and Parmesan also have only a very small insulin response. Certain nuts such as macadamia nuts, walnuts, and pecans are also very low. Although I always like to make a disclaimer when it comes to nuts. Nuts are one of the few low carb foods that are very easy to overconsume. If you have weight loss goals, be very careful and mindful of your nut consumption. A little can go a long way. When it comes to meat, bacon, pork in general, fish such as salmon, mackerel, sardines, herring, and anchovies, and duck score the lowest on the insulin index with turkey and chicken scoring higher, and beef and lamb even higher. Now, once again, this might not be applicable if you're eating a low carb diet, but I will note that even though beef and lamb are higher on the insulin index compared to some of the foods we've talked about already, they are still lower than most carb rich foods. Beef, for example, scores 51 on the insulin index. Meanwhile, bananas score 84 and white bread scores 100. And remember I mentioned bananas in that article at the start of the video? How crazy is that, that they are one of the foods with the highest insulin response? In terms of vegetables, anything non-starchy and low in sugar is probably good. 
broccoli, cauliflower, lettuce, garlic, onions, green beans, cucumber, zucchini, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, and mushrooms. Even though mushrooms are not technically a vegetable, we'll throw them in here. Bonus tip. I promised you a bonus tip at the start of the video, and here it is. There is one food, or drink I should say, that when you consume it before a meal, it significantly lowers the insulin response of that meal. And that drink is apple cider vinegar. Studies have shown that taking apple cider vinegar before a meal significantly reduces both the insulin and blood sugar response. Simply take one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar mixed in with a little bit of water before your meals to get this effect. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you today. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Your likes and comments really support my channel. They show YouTube that you enjoyed the video and then YouTube recommends it to more people. So anything you want to comment down below, I really appreciate it and I love chatting with you guys in the comment section. And if you want to support me a little bit more, you can click the join button down below to become a Health Coach Kate channel member and gain early access to all of my videos. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, you might also like my video on high insulin foods to avoid to reverse insulin resistance. You can check it out here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it right here. And if you want to check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.